Hello everybody, welcome back to Telltale Reviews, I'm your host Telltale, and when I'm not playing Crazy Frog Racer for the Game Boy Advance, what the fuck? I'm watching TV, and I like video games, so I have to watch something to do with video games. If only there was a video game cartoon shop that wasn't them. Funnily enough, this ape decided he wanted a cartoon show, so in 1996, Nelvana teamed up with the French animation team to work on a motion-captured animation show for Donkey Kong based on the rareware Donkey Kong Country games. This video is about how that turned out. Ah, I picked three episodes in total, one from season one and two from season two, as there's a dramatic shift in each season even compared to different shows. Now when you're watching on something like Amazon Prime, it'll tell you that there's three seasons. That's because to fit in with season two, they split season one into two different seasons. So you get season one, season two, which is season one part two, and then you get season three, which is season two. It's complicated. Let's just watch Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> So I already know what you're thinking. The fuck is a Donkey Kong? No, not that. You're wondering why this was made. Who this was made for? What the hell is a Donkey Kong show like? And it's not easy to answer. Donkey Kong has never had a voice. Donkey Kong has never had a personality. Except for the fact that he loves bananas and is sad when King K. Rool takes his. So how do you turn that into 22 minute episodes for cable TV? You don't, but they tried. Well, let's introduce the characters. Donkey Kong's a lovable fuzzy ape who's just, you know, constantly making mistakes, but always tries to make amends with the people who hate him because of these mistakes. Diddy Kong is his lovable sidekick, quote unquote lovable because his voice is like a cheese grater on a ball sack, it sucks. Bluster Kong is a greedy, money obsessed, candy loving and by candy I mean Candy Kong, loving little creature, kind of perverted and has one line in the show that made me want to crawl out of my skin and jump off a windowsill, but you know, we get past those things. Rejected. Watching my figure. Don't bother, I'm watching it for ya. Candy Kong, who's meant to be the sex appeal of the show, but is still a strong independent woman, even though she loves Donkey Kong and requires Donkey Kong to save her in a few episodes. Mind you, this show is for kids, so kids won't understand what the fuck is going on. You got King K. Rool, he's your average villain. He's actually pretty funny at times, I love K. Rool's performance in the show. And... Funky just exists. I mean... He's got a Jamaican accent. He loves surfing. Seems like Funky Kong to me. Finally, there's Cranky Kong, and he is just a cynical dickhead. But in a funny way. Yeah, Cranky reminds me of someone. Dad? Season 1, Episode 11, Aranga Tango, joins Funky Kong and Candy getting ready for the yearly dance. However, during a trial and error course with Hinka Dinkadoo, Donkey Kong manages to get Funky Kong hurt, meaning he has to take over. However, they haven't realised that King K. Rool has joined the competition, and is planning on using the wish from the co Crystal Coconut to take over Congo Bongo Island. Donkey Kong fails miserably at dancing before Funky Kong lays down a sick beat with Diddy, and, well, they win. It's a simple episode, but that's not why we're here. Simplicity isn't needed for a video game cartoon where there has already been an established plot. It's stupid, it's nonsensical, but it is a funny episode, I'll give it that. Its jokes do stick, but the faces don't, I wish the faces would get off of my screen half the time. What the fuck does this face mean? What the, what does it mean? What does it mean? In this episode, my personal favourite character was Donkey Kong. He's just got a charming aura around him, and his singing voice is actually really nice. I just feel the beat, hear it in your head, moving to your middle, ending at your feet. 
the motion capture could have been better, but this is early 90s, it's not like, well, late 90s, but it's early motion capture 90s. It's not going to be as perfect as something like Toy Story's animation, but it's not going to be as terrible as something like Ratatouille. Precisely! 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 That fucking exists. It's fine, it's mindless, it's something you can put in front of your kids and not have to worry about. It's not offensive, it's just, it's there. I don't know how to tell you, metal buddy. God, I hate you. This episode, which is the Big Switch Roo, Season 2, Episode 9, takes Donkey Kong on a wild trip as his mind is switched with a robot that was built for Bluster. Bluster abuses the real Donkey Kong body with the robot mindset to do work for him, while Donkey Kong tries to figure out how to get back into his body. It's actually quite funny. This one actually is good. The motion capture, if it's still there, has been improved. The model quality is now decent, except for Candy. I really hate Candy in Season 2. The characters are more likeable, even though they're still a bit of an arsehole trait, and, well... Overall, Season 2 is a huge increase over Season 1 in general. In this episode, my main gripe is with Bluster. Yeah, I don't like Bluster in general. Bluster's the only character I don't like for obvious reasons. Don't bother. I'm watching it for ya. But that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy an episode where Bluster is one of the main characters. I really enjoyed this episode, I thought it was funny. It does have one of my favourite songs in the series. It sounds like a Daft Punk track. I'm a metal head, a metal head, a metal head, a metal head. Finally, we have It's a Wonderful Life. This episode is pretty much about Donkey Kong wishing he wasn't around after fucking up many people's day, and, well, seeing what it's like with him at Congo Bongo. He then goes back, fucks up the life that he's been seeing, and then pretty much gets knocked out again and comes back to reality where everyone apologises and life goes on as normal. The reason this is my favourite episode out of every other one in the series is because Donkey Kong is given a reason to feel the way he does. They've done many episodes like this where he runs away and he doesn't feel happy with himself because he keeps fucking everything up, but this time he does fuck everything up, including his big celebration of becoming the new ruler of Congo Bongo Island. And it has one of my favourite songs in the series. I really recommend this episode. It's a wonderful life. It's absolutely, incredibly creative and funny. And that is Donkey Kong Country. It's fine. It's okay. It's inoffensive. It's just a comedy show for kids. And Donkey Kong's voice actor is great at playing the character. Gives a voice that you don't expect to hear from Donkey Kong. But anything's better than Seth Rogen. Anything's better than Seth Rogen. Cranky has some charm. I hated Bluster. I will always hate Bluster. King K. Rool was great. I love every joke from K. Rool. I love his performance. And I genuinely think he's a funny, entertaining character and actually carries a lot of the show. The only bit that carries it more is Donkey Kong's singing voice, because that... Oh, it's bliss. I give the show a solid 6 out of 10. It's fine. It's just mindless, dumb comedy. And for Donkey Kong, that's really all you want. It was sad that it was cut short in two seasons. I feel like if they give it a bit more attention, it would have done well for a third. But seeing as they butchered Candy Kong, I really don't want to see new characters. Bluster really had some fucked up vibes, man. He needs to be on the list. Watching my figure. Don't bother. I'm watching it for ya. So that's it. And next time you see me will be the Halloween video. And I hope to see you next time when we tackle... Oh, not again.